Hey, this is Kane with the Bratza support team, and today I'm going to be walking you through unclogging your Encore ESP. If your grinder sounds like it is on and running, but there are no grounds being produced, there's a chance that you have a clog. Here are some tips for getting you back up and running. First, you want to unplug the grinder and remove any remaining beans that might still be in the hopper. Rotate the hopper counterclockwise so that the grind indicator moves past 40. Then we can lift it up and out of the way. This will give us access to the gasket and the topper. For now, remove those and set aside. The quick release knob makes it easy to remove the comber. Simply spin it clockwise and lift up. Some of the earlier versions of the ESP do have a shim underneath the release knob. We want to make sure that is accounted for. This is a good time to start paying attention since calibration is a big part of the Encore ESP. As you can see, there's a lot of caked up coffee sitting under the bird. If you see chunks of coffee like this, we suggest using this dental tool or something pointy to break it free. But for now, let's bend the back of the brush that came with the grinder and lift out the paddle wheel and metal paddle wheel shim. Now we are going to carefully set aside all of the shims and felt that are underneath. You can also turn the grinder upside down, but please keep an eye on anything that falls out. With the shims underneath the paddle wheel accounted for, we can start the cleaning. After everything is cleaned and set aside, we can give everything a wipe down using a towel. Before putting everything back together, I would like to make sure this is addressed. Although this grinder may look clean of coffee, it does seem like there is some in the discharge chute, which is the passageway that leads from the top of the grind chamber into the ground bin. If that happens, your grinder is still probably clogged. We are going to use the same brush that came with the grinder and clear out any clogs or debris. I'm going to come up from the bottom of the chute, like so, so that I can see the back of the brush from the top. If you see it, then you're done. Before we start reassembling the rest of the parts, we want to make sure all components are in good shape. First, a clog can wear down the wings of the paddle wheel, which should have four wings sticking out. If you see any wear or breakage, we do recommend replacing the paddle wheel. Next, let us look at the burp holder, which is critical to securing your grind size. It has three distinctive tabs that should not be worn or broken. If they are, we recommend replacing it because a broken burr holder can result in coarse grinds at all settings. Now that we made sure that everything is in good shape, start reassembling by first adding the shims onto the drive shaft. After, we can add the felt and paddle wheel shim. Once all the shims are put back where they belong, we can add the paddle wheel. It should lock on top of the paddle wheel pegs. Now, the burr can just slide down onto the wheel. Make sure that the pins of the paddle wheel lock into the holes of the burr. If your grinder did come with a quick release shim, we want to place it on top of the burr. After, we can tighten everything down by placing the quick release knob onto the shaft and rotating it counterclockwise. Now that the bottom burr is installed, we can install the top burr. Since each tab is a distinctive size, it can only be placed in one direction. To make things easy, we have a red mark on the burr holder and on the adjustment ring, right around setting 27. Now we can place the gasket on top of the top burr. When installing, you want to make sure that the thicker side goes down towards the grinder. After everything is put into place, we can install the hopper. We want to make sure that the silver grind indicator tab gets placed on top of the silver arrow. Push down and rotate to your preferred grind setting. If you're still experiencing issues, please feel free to reach out to our support team by emailing support at Till next time.